Dark Bestiary is a really nice indie game with dark graphics and tactical turn-based combat that reminds you a bit of the Divinity Original Sin games. Except that unlike the Divinity Original Sin games, Dark Bestiary has fantastic chep approved minion mechanics without any modding needed. The game has a variety of different minions, including animals, undead, machines, totems, and elementals. The game is set in a dark fantasy world reminiscent of Diablo or Grim Dawn. You begin by designing your character. You can tailor the appearance to suit your tastes, choosing the hair, hair color, beard, etc. And you can also choose a background. The background you choose has no restrictions associated with it. It just provides you with your starter skills. What I recommend you do is choose your preferred fighting style and then go from there. I went with magic first because I wasn't sure if choosing something else would prevent me from getting necromancy later, but I was pleasantly surprised to see that choosing something else, like gunslinger, still permits you to get necromancy skills. For me personally, I enjoy guns the most. Later on I crafted and began using a pistol with my mage character, and the game allowed me to do that, which is great. Over time as you fight, you will earn points in your masteries. These are like buffs to your playstyle. If you summon a lot of minions, you'll level up your minions mastery and receive bonuses. If you decide to change your playstyle, like changing from swords to guns, the only punishment is having to level up your mastery again, so that you're as proficient with the gun as you are with the sword. The combat is turn-based and you have action points. Abilities cost different amounts of action points and moving also consumes them. After the beginner area, you can visit the various buildings in town and talk to the townsfolk, as well as trade goods of the trader, craft items at the crafting building, or acquire new skills from the arcanist. When you level up, you get a point to spend in your attributes. For minions, the leadership attribute is the one you want. It buffs the minions. I put all of my points into that. You can also get talents, and some of these also buff your minions. Occasionally after finishing a quest or leveling up, I'm not sure which exactly, you'll be prompted to choose one free skill from five random skills. If you're lucky, you'll get a minion skill this way. You're able to refresh the list a couple of times if you don't like what's on offer. If you can't get minions this way, you're able to save up and visit the Arcanist. As soon as you get about 500 gold, you can visit him and buy the Raised Dead ability. This lets you turn a corpse into a skeleton. There is a limit of three skeletons, which isn't a problem because in addition to the skeletons, you can get more minions with the other skills. The skeleton that has spawned appears to be random. So far I've seen archer, mage, and warrior types. The skeletons are permanent for the duration of the mission and follow you as you transition through the areas. They're strong and useful minions. The skeletons are considered warlock spells, but some of the other skills also have minions of their own. Hunter has animals like wolf, bat, raven, and also an ancient hunter spirit. The wolf, bat, and raven are considered companions. This means you can only have one of them out at a time. They also have a high cooldown, but have no requirements to be summoned. Of the companion minions, I've only tried the wolf, but he's a fantastic minion. He'll help you kill a few enemies and allow you to start summoning skeletons. If he dies, he also provides you with a corpse to make use of. The ancient hunter spirit is like a giant wolf, and it works differently to the other minions. In order to summon it, you must accumulate 100 rage. Rage is the yellow bar on the bottom right, and it fills whenever you use abilities. When you summon him, he'll persist for 5 turns, and he's able to deal a lot of damage. Elementals are another summon you can only have one of, but that also have no requirements to summon. I'm very happy with my ice elemental. It's great in both ranged combat and melee combat and is governed by Elementalist and Cryromancer. You can also get a Flame Elemental, and it's governed by Elementalist and Pyromancer. Although the Ice Elemental has a ranged attack, I haven't observed any ranged attack potential with the Fire Elemental. Fire Totems are another Elemental Summon. These are stationary, turret-like objects that burn enemies around them for a short time. I have not tried them, but I have fought against them when they've been used by enemies. Shaman has a powerful rock golem. It works like the ancient hunter spirit in that it requires 100 rage to summon, and it's a timed minion. 
He'll stun all enemies around him when he arrives, and he's tanky and a hard hitter, but he'll disappear after only a few rounds. He's a good minion, but I prefer the Ancient Hunter Spirit because it exists longer. Finally, we come to the Engineer minions. The Heal Bot is a timed minion that exists for 6 rounds. Every turn it will shoot a healing beam at a damaged ally. It's also got a powerful little lightning bolt attack. If it doesn't move during a turn, it can heal and zap an enemy twice. The only problem with the heal bot is that it tries to heal the skeletons, but they are damaged by the healing. The best minions from the engineer though are stationary turrets. One of them is a crossbow turret and it shoots twice per round, dealing high physical damage. The other one is a flamethrower turret which also shoots twice per round, but deals fire damage. There's no limit to how many you can have, but they're on a 4 turn cooldown. The most I've ever accumulated in a single battle is 4 turrets. There's also the target dummy minion, which does not attack, but it's useful as a meat shield. I haven't tried it though. I'm very happy with how this game has implemented its minions. There is a nice mixture of permanent minions, as well as timed ones, and a very nice variety of minions as well. If there are no corpses to make skeletons with, you're able to accumulate at least 4 permanent minions per fight. 1 companion, wolf, bat or raven, 1 elemental, and 2 turrets. If there are corpses, you can add 3 skeletons to this, which comes to a total of 7 permanent minions. If the battle drags on for a while, in theory you can keep adding turrets, but the minions will die off so you're unlikely to have more than 7 permanent minions per battle. But on top of these 7 minions, there is also the heal bot, which is a timed minion, but it lasts for 6 rounds, which is quite a long time. Then you also have the ancient hunter spirit, or rock golem, as well as mind controlled enemies. There's also a spell called zombify, that turns an enemy into a zombie, but the zombie doesn't fight, it just aimlessly wanders around. The only problem is that you can only have 10 skills active at any one time, and 2 of those skills are fixed. They're your weapon and offhand abilities, and they cannot be removed, so you're really only able to have 8 slots dedicated to your minion spells. For my character, this looks like Shoot Pistol, Offhand Grimoire Spell, Mind Control, Ice Elemental, Heal Bot, Flamethrower Turret, Crossbow Turret, Ancient Hunter Spirit, Raise Dead, and Wolf. While this is a good mix of minions, I'd really like to throw the offhand skill out because it's useless to me. I don't deal any damage with my character aside of shooting the pistol, and I'd rather have a minion skill there. For my character it's a wasted slot unfortunately. It feels like I'm hurting for slots. My only other complaint about the game is that the status effect icons kind of obscure what's going on on the battlefield. I'm scoring this game a 10 out of 10, it's a fantastic minions experience. The amount of minions you can have feels right for the battle areas. I don't feel like I'm left wanting for minions. I can see that the developer has recognised that some people do enjoy a minion playstyle and systems have been implemented to nicely accommodate our tastes. I really appreciate that. I hope that Larian has seen this game and is taking notes, because if Baldur's Gate 3 comes out and it has a single minion limit, I'll be very upset. Twice now they've made fantastic games, but with infuriating minion limits and timers, and I'll be ready to call them out on it and shame them for committing crimes against Minumancy if they do it again. All Larian needs to do is implement their summoning like this game has done, and it'd be great. You've got a mixture of permanent minions and time minions. The minion variety is fantastic, and you're not locked into some kind of restrictive archetype. You want to be a fireball hurling robe necromancer? You can do that. Or you can choose to back up your minions with gunfire, or wade in there with an axe and plate armor like a juggernaut. I love the freedom of choice. I hope the developer adds more minions to the game. Minions like ghosts, wraiths, zombies that can fight, that type of thing would be really cool. As well as more kinds of machines like golems and robot warriors. Demonology is another aspect that would fit really nicely into this game. There's some of the few demons. Thanks for watching. I've got more videos on necromancy stuff coming soon.